Welcome to Casey Desi once again. Happy Valentine's Day to every one of you. And this month, as you all might know, is the Heart Health Month. And this month is also very important from the respect of uh, in, in the respect of women's health. Today we have Dr. Rajalakshmi Malai and Dr. Uh, Kiran Mai Chalapa. They're both practicing cardiologists in this town. And thank you for coming over. Really, I think I do want to know what else I can do or what else we men can do towards the health of women, the women in our life, the mothers, the daughters, and our wives. So what can we do more? And before we go in there, just tell us a little bit about yourselves. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Kiran Chilapa. Uh, I'm originally from Hyderabad. Uh, I did my medical school from Usmania Medical College and my uh, residency and fellowship from New York. Uh, and I'm a practicing cardiologist here. I practice uh, at Research Medical Center in Kansas City. And today I have with me my classmate and my friend of many years, uh, Raja Lakshmi. Hi, uh, it is my pleasure to be here today. Yes, I've known Kiran for a long time. We've actually pretty much followed each other most of the time. Mm -hmm. I trained at Usmania for medical school, and I was in Connecticut. She was in New York, um, trained in cardiology and medicine there. And uh, my first job was in Topeka, Kansas. And now I'm with Shawnee Mission Medical Center. It's about seventh year of my practice. And Seven years. How yeah. long have you been in Kansas now? I've been in Kansas for four years. Four years. Now. Four years. Wow, perfect. Yeah. Okay. So, what can I do? So, right. I mean, I, so probably I, this is a question coming from every man out there. Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Well, as you said, February is Heart Health Month, and heart health becomes a real concern for women because it is the number one killer for women. And a lot of women don't know about it. So, right. the first step would be to increase the awareness. And increasing the awareness is very important because the symptoms of heart disease in women are very atypical, that means the normal symptoms that we know in men, chest pain, going to your jaw, uh, like they show in our movies where they're holding their chest, going across the arm, these don't normally happen in women. Women have a lot of oh. different symptoms. They're tired, they think it's, they attribute it to being tired, too much work, stress at home, a lot of things, they never think it's their heart that's causing the trouble. Absolutely. And even though they have symptoms, they don't usually seek medical help right away. So if you ask, especially an Indian woman, what would you do if your husband's having a heart attack? They'll pick they up the phone know. and call 911. Uh, there was actually a survey recently where they asked women, what would you do if you think you are having a heart attack? And less than two-thirds of them said, I'll call 911. So, so they, they are not thinking for themselves. Yes. Um, is there a particular age they should be worried about? Um, the heart health, especially now, when should they start thinking about heart health? Interesting you ask that question. Um, uh, by the way, heart health just doesn't mean heart attacks. It also includes high blood pressure, stroke, anything that has relation to cardiovascular disease. Right. Um, recently, there was guidelines released about stroke in women specifically, and this is the first time in the history of American Heart Association that they actually released guidelines specific for women in stroke. And the reason they released that was because more younger women have stroke than men do. So that makes okay. it too important. So when you ask me for an age group, there is no specific age group. The sooner you take care of yourself, the better it is for you. So if you make your lifestyle changes early on, then you probably won't have to deal with one of these. So obviously that applies for to a teenager, right? Too, yes. at the same, same way that it applies to an older person. And one of the things as Indian, as Indian women and as people of South Asian descent, we have to remember, genetically, we are more predisposed to having heart disease. We okay. have a very high incidence of diabetes. One in three people, Indians, can have heart di uh, diabetes. diabetes right. And when you add it to that, when you come here and adapt the, West, the so-called Western lifestyle, right. it increases your heart, disc, uh, heart disease risk tremendously. So okay. we are also starting to see younger and younger women having the symptoms of heart Symptom disease. Symptom or some sort, some sort of a, some manifestation of right. a heart disease. So it's pretty evident that we have more risk for diabetes and women in general who have diabetes are at a higher risk for heart disease. 
If you take a man who has diabetes and a woman who has diabetes, a woman with diabetes is at seven times risk of having cardiovascular disease. Seven disease. times. Seven times, compared to three to four times in men. So there's a discrepancy. It, that's what makes it more important that women step up to the plate and take care of themselves and you know, be aware of what they're at risk for. Right. Oh my God, okay. Obviously, then the question is how? What do they do? Right. I mean, no, they're, they're running around throughout the day, but is that, is that enough or something else that they can do? The most important thing is eating healthy, obviously. Coming from India, we have a very carbohydrate-rich diet. Exactly. And most of our carbohydrate is refined carbohydrate, white rice, which is so good. Uh, <laughs> then we eat lots of rice, uh, even chapati, lots of chapati. Any carbohydrate, high, diet high in carbohydrate increases the risk of diabetes, thereby increasing the risk of heart disease. Heart disease. And the next thing is physical activity. Mm -hmm. uh, and a third entity that is gaining more and more importance, and this has been ranked next, right next to smoking and diabetes by the American Heart Association, is stress. Right. As women are getting into middle age, they are... They are getting sandwiched between taking care of their families, husband and kids, and they also start becoming the primary caregivers for their parents and in-laws, and this adds a tremendous amount of stress. True. So all these act as a, they act as a boiling pot to increase and the risk of And everything then comes disease. together and then... Right. If, when you talk about risk, there are certain things we can modify and certain things we cannot change. Like Correct. age, Correct. your family history, your hormonal status, that you cannot change. But definitely there are things like she mentioned, physical activity, because at, as much as physical activity decreases your heart, risk, heart disease risk, just being sedentary in itself will increase heart disease risk. So True. it's it's pretty clear that increasing your physical activity is very important. And it's Diet very much helpful. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And smoking, there's absolutely no reason why anybody should smoke in my, that, that's my point of view, there may be arguments out there, but um, smoking increases more risk in women than men, again, for some reason, we do not know what the cause is, okay. whatever okay, risk you take, yeah, once a woman starts smoking, they will have a much higher risk. The risk increases tremendously. Absolutely. Talking about diet, you know, she already mentioned all the, we tend to eat all these simple carbohydrates, uh, Sorry, which, which are not usually associated with fiber, which makes it really bad. Um, we don't know our facts about our fats. You know, every fat is not the same. You know, the different mm -hmm. kinds of fats. The only common thing about fat is they all give the same number of calories per gram. That's the only common That's thing. But okay. there's saturated fats and unsaturated fats and there's trans fats. So it's really important to start reading labels when you're go going to the grocery stores and trying to buy food for your family. Are you really doing the right thing? Is it really good to switch margarine or butter? Probably not, because you are probably you know trading it for more saturated fats and more trans fats. So um, just read the labels. Trans fat are really bad. Actually, trans American, fats are bad. Okay. Right. That's American important. Heart Association is trying to get rid of trans fats. Mm -hmm. Saturated fats are not really recommended. So try to pick something healthy oils like you know olive oil if you can cook with. Right. And. As a simple guide, anything that has trans fats, every, donuts, muffins, all the stuff that tastes good, croissants, <laughs> pastries. Uh, these are all really I love bad. pastries. Yeah. <laughs> all, it all have trans fat. Anything that tastes fluffy and flaky and really delicious probably has trans fat. Okay. Yes. As okay. a general, fat As a general yeah. anything that you eat fried outside of your house probably has a certain amount of trans, trans fat. fat in it. So, in short, eat more complex carbohydrates we call that what that means is that brown bread the brown rice that doesn't really look the very multi -grain stuff and right. multi-grain hundred percent whole wheat bread the your the first label should be hundred percent whole grain and if you're eating rice switch to brown rice okay it takes time right, to get right. used to it but it does eventually as a simple rule add fruits and veggies as much as you want they almost never do harm to you lots of fiber, lots of vitamins, you know, keep them fresh. Uh, you always have some kind of other, uh, or other fruits available, seasonal fruits, so right. take advantage of it. It's still better than drinking a glass of juice. 
any day, I would, I would pick a piece of fruit over a glass of juice. Okay. Yeah, so the same. Okay, if you the fruit, have an apple, apple versus a glass of apple juice, juice always go fruit. for the apple because it has the fiber in it. If you drink a glass of juice, the sugar levels in your body rise like that. If you eat an apple, right. the fiber in the apple prevents the sugar from being absorbed very fast, Quickly, so your sugar okay. levels do not go up so fast. That's Perfect. Why, right. Okay. It's yeah. very simple. You're making it easier for me now. <laughs> and as a general rule, this is what I tell my patient. Anything that comes in a can, wrapper, or package is probably bad for you. Try not to eat anything that comes pre-prepared. Right. Try to make most of your meals from scratch. Watch the portion sizes. Just because something is good for you does not mean you need to eat large quantities. Right. Uh, and a good resource is going to the USDA website where they show what a portion size looks like. And I think it's a good okay. idea to <laughs> That's go my to the website time. and know what a portion looks like. If they say a serving of cereal, a serving of cereal is not a big... A uh, coral bowl, bowl full of cereal. <laughs> it's actually a cup, which is probably True. one fourth of the bowl, and it, it's it's a very oh, smart yes. idea to know what a portion size looks like before. We are that is surprised. important. A cup that of cereal important. is really not very much. It's just eight ounces of it. I mean, right, and that's you, oh my God. Okay, you you are going to change a lot of me, especially and <laughs> probably a lot of us here. Um, the, well, okay, you already exercise a lot. I don't know if I can. <laughs> no, I, I bike a lot. So talking about that, I wanted to briefly mention that um, since I was involved in biking, I came to know that she is also biking, and she has completed the MS 150 last year. She, yeah, that was that was fantastic. 140 miles, and I always told myself they just give you the 10 miles for trying. <laughs> <laughs> so it so, was really fun. Actually, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, you know, hopefully we'll keep doing something more physical. I wish the recommendation right. is to do at least 30 minutes of aerobic activity. So the recommendation is to get 150 minutes <laughs> of cardio exercise, which is usually divided into 30 minute intervals, five okay. days of a week. And they do tra try and say, try to do some muscle strengthening exercises on the other two days. So I see. So you, you exactly. intersperse it with muscular exercises exactly. and then the rest of the five days you're going to right. do aerobic exercise. Right. So if, you, if you're a runner, they recommend running for three days, taking a break on the fourth day you do your muscle strengthening exercises. Okay. And aerobic exercise includes running, walking, biking, elliptical, swimming, rowing, anything that raises dancing, Bollywood dancing, anything that raises your heart rate up. Bollywood dancing. I'm pretty sure a lot of us are interested <laughs> in doing that more. Yeah, so. I do change the kind of exercise I do because I get bored of the same activity if I continue to do it. So, right. Yeah. And women, Perfect. especially as they're getting older, once you're past your mid 30s, we don't build any more muscle. You start losing your muscle mass, so it's very important to do the strength training exercises. Okay. They don't have to be fancy. You can just buy some dumbbells, five pound, seven pound, eight pound weights, and just do biceps. Uh, a good exercise is squats and lunges. They do some. They look funny when you first start doing them, but they're all yeah. actually very good for your muscles. And coming mm -hmm. from a you know Asian origin, I cannot um, stop myself from mentioning yoga. Yoga is an excellent way to manage your stress and also use your own body to tone your muscles. The kind of core muscle development that comes from yoga is amazing. I wish right. I had spent enough time doing it when I was a child. It would be much easier to do it now. That's a good note to all the children out there. Absolutely. Start now. <laughs> yes, start now. start now, start young, start early as much as you can and continue with it at least five days a week, yes. if possible. And this is the time for parents to set an example. So do it with your kids, make it fun. Family of exercises. Absolutely. Yeah, you can make it fun. Very like nice. you can go play yes. tennis with your kids or it's a good cardio exercise and you have something to talk about later. Absolutely. And I think you mentioned the uh, women beyond 30. Can you go a little bit beyond that? Let's say sure. 50, 55, 60, because my parents are here, for example, of that age. What else they can do at that age? You know, they probably have not done taking care of anything else till right. now. Women specifically, it's really important once they advance to the age where they're menopausal or postmenopausal, um, past their childbearing age, where their hormones are not there to help them anymore. So. All of a sudden, they're losing their muscle uh, tone. 
they they have a lot of hormonal changes in the body. Most women also tend to losing their bone, bone the calcium in their exactly. bone. Calcium in the bone, yes. Exactly, and their heart disease risk rises steeply at this age. So okay. for the older age group, the the generation of our parents, it's the same things that we have said: exercise, eat healthy, whole grains, portion sizes, lots of fresh fruits and vegetables, exercise, and the best walking. For a lot of the older people, simple. The best exercise is just walking. Just walking. When the weather That's permits, the walk outside. Right. When the weather does not permit, you have some sort of a treadmill at home. Electrical at home. That yeah. Works. Just make sure you walk at a, at least a medium pace. You know, okay. strolling slowly will help you, but not as much as a medium pace walk because by doing that, you're going to keep your heart rate at a certain rate, and that's what gives you the benefit is keeping your heart rate. The easy way to do, which is what we tell our patients, is we tell them. I tell them to do the talk test, which is you can answer simple yes or no when you're exercising. You cannot carry on a full conversation. Okay. That should be the intensity. You should aim to just at the top of your head. For a lot of people, day to day, trying to keep track of your heart rate, only a lot of marathon runners or Olympic kind of champions and right. those training for championships, they can do it. For you, for us to get out there and for the half an hour we exercise, if we have to do all those fancy things, that makes it very difficult. So you should be able to say yes or no, <laughs> but not carry on a whole right. conversation, whatever exercise. Okay, Great you point. should not be able right. to. Great point, because you don't need a heart monitor to go start exercising, right? right? But if you do own one, the way you look at your target heart rate is 220 minus your age. So say you're a 40-year-old. Mm -hmm. then your target rate is 180 and as long as you reach 85% of that which is between 150 and 160 you're doing a fair job just keep it there I see. right okay. and it, people ask what do I do if my heart rate goes over that over that cut down on the intensity and increase the time of your exercise until you develop the endurance to go ahead and be able to finish that exercise without getting your heart rate that high and that will happen with time that only means that your functional capacity has to improve before you go on to that level of exercise. Right, right. right. No, the 220 minus age, age that's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Mm -hmm. And I stopped calculating at 40, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, none of us grow beyond 40. We're always 40. I love that. I'm, I'm 40, yeah. <laughs> and the other important thing which the American Heart Association is pushing is for men and women, everyone, know your numbers. There is a big push to say know your numbers, know your blood pressure. The top number, which is the systolic, the bottom number, which is the diastolic. Right. Know your body mass index, which is, you can plug it into a formula, your height and your weight, and then it gives out your body mass index. You want your body mass index to be under 25, which is ideal. 25 right. to 30 is already overweight, and above 30, we, we have a medical term called obese. That means you, we shouldn't be yeah. aiming for. And the other numbers are your cholesterol numbers. Mm -hmm. Your total cholesterol, your good cholesterol, which is HDL, and your bad cholesterol, LDL. LDL, yeah. And your fasting blood sugar. So these are the numbers the American Heart Association wants everyone to know. If you're past 30, 35 years, you need to get it done once. Get it done at your annual physical. If you have family history of any of them, diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, you need to get it done earlier and you need to have it rechecked every few years. Okay. And everyone needs to know these numbers, just like they know everything else. Right. These are the things right. that exactly. they well, know everything, but then they should know about themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. And that brings up a very important point because high blood pressure or hypertension is so prevalent in Asian countries. Especially, I noticed that we eat more salt than any other population that I've known. Salt. That's a salt. big, that's a huge culprit. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> you know, the recommendation is actually to eat less than two grams a day. You know, Two grams a day. Two grams oh. a day. It's not really that much if you look at it. Correct. A loaf of bread has about, about 100 milliequins and you add up from your breakfast to your dinner, you're easily up to three grams without eating. One can of Campbell's soups has almost 1500 milligrams of sodium, just one can. Oh my God. Okay. So all you, if your allowance is 2,000 milligrams, you've already gone through most part of it by your lunch. Correct. So Correct. it's important to read labels. What can we do? Most people recommend not adding any salt when you're cooking. It is hard to do with our food. But be vigilant. 
you know, be vigilant. And as you said, if you practice something for 21 days, it becomes a habit. So try exactly. cutting down on the salt. Maybe you're get used to that. Um, okay. Anything else that we can I mention? The <laughs> last word on the stress part of it. Learn to deal with stress. Stress is a daily part of life. It has become, it's creeped into our life. Everyone has stress. It's just how we deal with it. Anything that, that makes us deal, make it easier. Like she said, yoga, meditation, relaxation. And a personal favorite of mine is, I think, spiritual aspect. You know, some kind of spirituality, whatever way you choose it. Right. Be it meditation, be it some form of giving back, some form of charity, volunteering in society, work. charity, society. They all help lower your stress and they make you realize how fortunate your life is when compared to a lot of other things going on in the li in the world. In the world. And I think stress, uh, ways to relieve stress is very important. And we already talked about smoking, no smoking, absolutely. Yes, smoking is one thing that definitely, you know, is, is a no-no. It's one of the hardest habits no -no. to kick, but yes. one of the most important ones to do if you're into it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much indeed for taking time off. I know you guys are very busy with the family life and the work life. You're stressed out already, but I'm pretty sure you're handling you're not it. looking stressed out. No, you're not <laughs> looking stressed, but I mean, that shows how well you're handling your stress. Thank you. And that's what we need to learn from these two women here. Uh, I think the resolution is to start making one change at a time. At a time right. Let us start one change at a time and see how we can improve the women in our life. Right, exactly, exactly. Again, go red for women. women. Every first Friday of every February is National Wear Red Day and it has been declared that way to increase awareness of heart disease in women and let's just do it, you know, why not? Thank you, absolutely, why not? Let's do it, let's do it for our women. Thank you very much for tuning in.